sometimes guys who have just been very good for a very long time kind of just get overlooked because they've been very good for a very long time. And that's kind of been the case with Darius Slay a little bit. We've become accustomed to him being a great cornerback, and so we kind of just expect him to be a great cornerback. But he still is great, and you know, now that I'm making some of these shorter videos so I can get more of them out of there, I figure, hey, maybe to make a video about Darius Slay, someone who's consistently been good and is still putting great work on tape. He had yet another great season last year in 2018, and so let's just jump into some of the best plays he put on tape, and let's start with this one. He has a one-on-one -on -one matchup right there in the bottom half of the screen, and he's going to be going up against a receiver who's going to run a just a straight-up go route to the right side of the screen. So one thing you're going to notice right off the bat is speed on this one. I mean, look at how he's able to just keep pace with that receiver all the way through. He does a very good job, however, he doesn't exactly do a perfect job. I mean, if you look right now, I mean, there still is a little bit of space here. A little bit of space 40 yards down the field, so it's definitely, I mean, nothing that you would be ashamed of. But basically, my point is that Dallas still has a chance here if they want to make a perfect throw and have their receiver make a great catch. So now it's going to be about finishing here. Can Darius Slay make sure that he reaches over and basically disrupts this play once it hits the receiver's hands? Basically, what he's going to have to do here, since this is going to be a very good throw, is he's going to have to create contact as soon as the ball hits that receiver's hands, but not before it hits the receiver's hands. Because, of course, well, the last thing you want is a touchdown. The second to last thing you want would be a pass interference call, giving them the ball at the one-yard line. This is really such a tough situation for a defensive back to be in, because, you know, if if you make this play, it's kind of, okay, so what? It was just an incomplete pass. However, if you don't make this play, it's a huge deal for the offense. Whether it results in a touchdown or pass interference to the one-yard line, that would just be a huge swing. So basically, this is not a 50-50 situation where it can be equally positive or negative for Slay. Either this is going to be a huge negative or it's going to remain the same, which is partially why a cornerback can be sometimes the most hated position if you don't have a good cornerback. Although for Darius Slade, the only guys who hate him are probably Packers, Vikings, and Bears fans. Largely because look at how he's able to close this one out. I mean, he definitely gets that contact at the exact perfect time and is able to knock the ball away. And unfortunately, the Cowboys player got hurt. But just a tremendous play by Slay on that one. To both have the speed to be able to get back quickly and create almost no separation, but also know the awareness to know exactly when he has to hit that receiver, and then being able to create enough contact to disrupt the play. Just an all-around tremendous play by Slay. Having awareness is very important in any position, and it's definitely important as a cornerback, because you have to know your role, but also know sometimes where you have to abandon your role and try to do something else. And what I mean by that is something like this. It's going to be a cover 2 zone, and Dallas has a guy running a curl route right over there, which in theory this is a great way to beat zone coverage, because it's just past the linebackers, but just before Darius Slay, who's going to be in charge of covering that top left-hand corner of the screen. But one thing to take a look at here is look at how close Slay is. I mean, Slay is very far in on this one. He's clearly expecting something short, and also, as you see, the second that Dak Prescott is going to be making this throw, then Slay is going to break in and try to break it up. I mean, Slay is already breaking in right now when the ball is still just left Dak Prescott's hands. That's what allows him to run in, knock it away, and honestly, if he had another half step, he could have ended up intercepting that ball. I mean, that's just tremendous awareness more than anything by Slay. He's obviously physically gifted, but let's be honest, everyone in the NFL is. What separates the ones who are physically gifted from the ones who are just tremendous players is the mental things. It's being able to know what your situation is, know what's going on, and being able to capitalize on what's going on. And this next play will kind of be an example of both of those first two things I talked about. Once again, it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the bottom half of the screen, and once again, the receiver is going to be running a go route to the right side of the screen. So at first, what you're going to see Slay do is do what he always does, which is keep up and make sure that he doesn't give up much separation. That's what he does pretty consistently, and he does it again here. But also, if you notice, he's actually not just looking at the receiver, he's also cutting back and trying to look around and seeing what's going on. He has such confidence in his abilities that he can keep up with a receiver while looking around and seeing what else is going on in the field. And that's important, because look at Adam Thielen on this route. He's the one who's actually this ball is designed to go to. He's the guy who's going to get the most open, in theory. But Slay realizes what's going on, abandons his assignment, and jumps over and is able to intercept this pass. I mean, that's just tremendous awareness right there. I could be able to realize that that was maybe going on, however, when I'm looking around and seeing what's going on, I would've gotten completely burned and the receiver would've gotten way past me on the sideline. And if I'm being honest, I probably also wouldn't have had the awareness to see what's going on. But you know, an NFL level talent might have the awareness to know what's going on, but might not have the physical tools, or they might have the physical tools, but not the awareness. It's the combinations. Those are the real dangerous players, the guys who have both. One more play about situational awareness is going to be this one. It's a third down and 14, meaning that the first down marker is right there, right at the 30 yard line. And so because of this, Detroit is thinking, okay, just keep everyone in front of the 30 yard line. I don't care if you let them get to the 31 yard line, because that's now fourth down. 
you could debate whether or not that's the correct decision because that could allow Arizona to potentially get in field goal range. However, that's the kind of defense that they are going to be running on this play. So that's where Slay is on this play, and they do have a receiver running a curl route right over there, basically trying to get to the 29-yard line. Now, I do have to say, in fans, this is a pretty basic play call that you probably shouldn't call in this situation, and you definitely shouldn't throw it to in this situation. However, Josh Rosen is a rookie and is known to make some rookie mistakes. However, one thing I really like about this is look at Slay here. He's not even bothering looking in Rosen's direction. So typically, when you do this, this means that your whole goal was to just break up the pass. You're not really thinking interception here. However, that's not the case at all for Slay. He's thinking interception all the way, which is why he's not looking in Rosen's direction. He knows where the first down marker is and knows that that's probably where that Arizona Cardinal is going to be cutting, right past the first down marker. So the second he stops, Slay runs back, and again, he never looks at Rosen that entire time. He just goes over to where the spot is going to be and is able to intercept it and run it all the way for a touchdown. That's just situational awareness. It's understanding what's going on and then being able to capitalize on what's going on. So again, yeah, you know, another just a quick video. Hope you guys enjoy it. I know you guys prefer my longer range videos, the 10 plus minute videos. But, you know, as I've mentioned before, those videos aren't going anywhere. Those videos are still coming out once a day. This is just bonus content, if you will. So again, hope you guys enjoy it. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>